Welcome, I'm Chad. I'm here with Sid today. We're going to be talking about a modular home remodel on the kitchen. This should be a lot of fun, so let's take it away. I really just want to change the look. I need new countertops and new cabinets. cabinets yeah. That's really my most important. I don't really feel like I can change the design a ton, so I think what I'd like to know is how I can maximize this space or what modern features I can add into this. I actually want to cut this thing in half and move it up to Apple Valley or Hill Valley oh. and use it as either an Airbnb or my own kind of cabin property, and then I'll build my forever home on this half acre. Oh. I'd rather not move walls around. I'm gonna have new flooring put in, and I'm just kind of doing this on top of that. Just use this as a dining now. Now, right? Mm -hmm. and you're hoping for that to be? It has great light. So I'd okay. kind of like to turn that into a little corner seating breakfast nook. Okay, I see. Um, I don't necessarily feel like I want a formal dining area. I more importantly like to have a real functional bar. You've got a call space under here, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes it easy to access plumbing or electrical. The only thought I have with the seating is to integrate, say, the dining space into a bigger seating would be to create this into an island. An island's really helpful when you have it accessible to the main working area of your kitchen. The challenge with the island, the way I'm seeing it right now, is that it's going to pull you away from, from the, that main area. Now, the great thing in your kitchen, you have landing space to the left and right of your cooking, which that's a safety issue in my opinion. Ideally on a fridge door fridge, if I was to recommend the ideal, if you have landing space on both sides. I will tell you, just from the way that I am in this kitchen, I've never used this to set anything out of the fridge. No I always kidding. So landing space is good. Landing space is good for your sink area. So those are bonuses in this particular layout. If we do the island because we don't want to encroach on the space, it's going to pull whatever activities we have to be using the island for away from the main area of the kitchen with a peninsula way set up. In a way, it kind of discourages a lot of inter interaction in the kitchen. And some people like that. Do you have guests? Do you like them to be in here with you in the space? Um, it's not super functional for that because of this little corner area right. here. So I almost think having a dishwasher in the island would make a lot of sense because that's where the dishes come from. Yeah. What would you see yourself using the island for? What do you use this part of the peninsula for right now? And that's mostly storage and just place to like, if I'm entertaining, I will set out food for people to come and get food and then oh, go okay. to other spots. But the thing that I miss the most about other kitchens I've had before is when I'm in here cooking, this is usually the social area where people are chatting with me and there's not, there's only place for one person to sit there. Yeah. So my goal would be, I don't mind being in the kitchen cooking by myself, but I would love to have people be able to like hang out here. The island could serve that same purpose for you as well. It's gonna create an, an access for people to walk through here. They'll, they'll, they will be more engaging with you in the kitchen. It'll just be a natural thing. And you'll have a lot of space if you did do your food on here like you do for your peninsula for them to, to pull from to eat. But then you can also integrate your, your seating in there as well, right? So are you thinking an island kind of kicked out more into this room and there would be an access to the kitchen from uh -huh. that side and this side. Uh -huh. yeah. I can't visualize it with the way that it's connected. And that's right and that's the issue point. And let's just say for the sake of now you need to dog you door here and you have the cabinets go there. Then your island can go the same, the storage part of the island. Then you start your seating. I do a lot of uh, grilling and I use my blackstone outside. I want to make it so that this flows well to come in and out. And I can quite frankly, if I could come through this door and into my kitchen to grab stuff, that might be nice. That will be better yeah. than having to go around to get food. A three foot walkway is really comfortable for one person. 48 is ideal for two people, but 42 is comfortable. You can both walk kind of sideways with and kind of just be snug, but you can still make it work. So if we did 42. Yeah, see now you still have a four foot island, and that's pretty decent. Would you cut this right here? No, I'd probably cut it right here and keep going as far oh. as you want to there, yeah. You that's could do that. Means. Absolutely. That would be the only other way that makes it feel more welcome. And then it kind of just flows from this doorway. Mm-hmm. I'll just stop the storage part of the island right around wherever we decide to end that. It would just feel more comfortable to have it. That's where the kitchen ends and then the seating begins. Then you can either, again, just set a table against that or you can put built in. Uh, seating that's a part of the countertop material that's fixed in place. I think you could go six feet. You want two feet per person when you're sitting down. It's the three on each side, one on the Right. And now you have seven, which would accommodate for a bigger family if yes. they fit this right. Whenever I help clients with their tiny other layouts, um, I'll have them sometimes even just take the layouts and stick them on the wall and kind of look at them all day long. Oh, by the way, I just used the kitchen just now. That one would work better, right? Are you concerned about storage space in the, in the kitchen right now at all? If you're okay with the storage space, then yeah, I wouldn't worry about going taller or deeper necessarily. 
Um, I just worry about making sure it's just whatever device that we're yeah, 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 exactly. So these, this middle divider is a lot less common to get into these cabinets, even underneath your sink. Most of the new cabinets now, they won't have those. They call them butt doors, so the two doors touch together and there's no divider in between. Oh. Those are all just the little luxuries that I'm missing. Yeah. The only thing that I want to make sure I do is pull out the doors. And I couldn't, of course, because I have the center bar like you were speaking right, about. Right. But like these are super deep. Yeah, pull out shelves in there. Or even like a rollout pantry. True. Turn this into kind of a pantry uh -huh. to maximize that. For those watching this, you have questions or tips or ideas, go up and put them in the in the comments. It's, it's kind of fun to do that. And I'll give you feedback on anything I, I hear from that. Do you know, does the, the microwave, does it vent outside right now? That's okay. That's by far a better way to go with recycling or recirculating. Okay. What just ends up happening is that it ends up always turning into a bigger project than what people think, right? What I usually like to do is kind of give you, you know, an overall budget. And I can give you one. It's just a simple budget worksheet so you can be practical about your spend levels, right? And you can decide, do I want to take that line item out? Like your lighting looks great in here. That might be a very minimal cost to make a couple adjustments the floor this is you're talking about removing this right mm -hmm. okay so she had a demolition company over here right before i i came and wants to tear, tear this up and it, and what's the purpose for doing that there was there's tile under this i didn't like the tile okay. i hired someone to put this in and it wasn't done great it's moving around it's lifting in some areas okay. and it's it was put on over tile over a layer of thin set okay. So I'm just going to match everything and have to do it in one big double On a trailers, uh, double wide or single wide trailers, um, the, the floor joists aren't usually as strong as, as in most construction jobs, but they'll usually have more bounce to them or flex. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the reason why um, you might be having some issues is that the, the tile might be crackling, cracking, right? From the flex of the floor. I don't know that for sure because I'm not looking at it, but I'm just speculating that that's a possibility. Tile is a little more of a, of a permanent thing. It's designed to, to, to not have, not be cracking. It's meant to be there for a while. Right. So you might consider doing some sort of flooring floor for that reason. Right. Really the two hardest things inside of, of a space like we're dealing with here is your flooring and your cabinets. And so those are the two areas that, that I'd say, make sure you're doing the proper investment in those. That'll keep it uh, practical. And then my plan was to have LVP put all the way down and then cabinets on top. Would you say that's a good thing or should it go up to the cabinet? So if you do that, the best way to do that is to glue it down. A lot of the flooring companies have a warranty on there that will um, void it if you put it underneath a uh, fixed item like a cabinet. Mm. COVID changed time frames a little bit, but they've come back a little bit, so more and more practical. But usually you're going to be looking at month of planning. Okay. Uh, go find your products, make sure you have what you, you need. You need to shop contractors or whoever you use to help you with the work, right? You need about two months to order materials in. Okay. Okay. The only thing that you can't have on the site um, ready for the installation is the countertops. But everything else can be here um, in your garage waiting for you to tear out. Okay. Once you tear out, then you can start putting things in. And then I plan on about eight to 10 weeks, could even be a little less than that for the actual construction part of it, right? If you have to do any drywall work, then that's one of the things that usually ends up sitting here for like a, a week without much looking like this and mm -hmm. happening with your space, right? Do your shopping now on the people with products okay. that you want to use. And then, uh, and you know, get your, your basic layout together and then have shop your pricing and cabinets and stuff and everything else you need. Get that out of the way, shop, purchase it, and get ready to roll. It's Perfect. No, this is super helpful. This was like my nemesis right here. Yes figuring this out to be more functional. And I think you've really answered my questions and given me a lot of great ideas and options, especially as I move through my kitchen, so I can be like, ah, I can see myself moving this way. Yeah. One thought you might consider doing, if you know for sure you're gonna be doing all that stuff, you might just have somebody come in and cap your countertop here, separate your cabinets and pull this thing out. At least you can start to tape off and fill out the space, mm -hmm. right? And then just get a feel for how the space feels for, for using it that way, right? So really just start living in a mess. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. This has been great. Cool. Hopefully yeah. I can help you in some way too. You guys, um, remodeling is a tough, it's it's a tough project. Sometimes people are not sure what to expect if you've not done a remodel before. It's kind of nice to be able to listen and get some preparation, prepare for the challenges that are faced with the remodel. Um, and if you haven't done it before, then maybe get some feedback. You'll hear lots of nightmare stories about it. But this is a fun project. There's a lot of opportunities here. And you know, maybe we'll have the privilege of seeing how this project turns out at the end and we'll show it to you. Okay. Thanks for thanks for watching. Come again. <laughs>